Welcome in this new lesson. Well, this time we're going to talk about the catalytic receptor or the enzyme coupled receptor signaling. If you remember the last lesson, we talked about the G protein signaling, which involved a 7 helix transmembrane receptor, the GPCR, and a large heterotrimeric G protein. The production of a second messenger and the activation of a specific protein kinase according to the type of the G protein. Well, the case is different here in the catalytic receptor signaling because the receptor is only one subunit and upon binding of a ligand it has to dimerize with a similar subunit in order to send an activation signal. The activation once starts Phosphorylation of tyrosine residues in the intracellular portion of the receptor starts to occur. These phosphorylated tyrosine residues act as docking sites for certain proteins. The main proteins that can bind to these docking sites are called adapter proteins, and these adapter proteins are responsible for transmitting the signal. But other docking proteins can also bind to these sites, and these proteins might be amplifiers or suppressors like the insulin receptor substrate, IRS1, or the Cassatus B lineage lymphoma, the CBL protein, respectively. And it's good to know that the CBL suppresses the signal transduction by inducing the ubiquitylation and hence proteasomal degradation of the receptor. Phosphorylation in the catalytic receptor pathways occurs on either tyrosine residues, and that's the most common, or the serine free union residues as occurs in the TGF beta signaling pathway. And this is not our case today. Today we're basically talking about tyrosine phosphorylation. And tyrosine phosphorylation is carried on either by the receptor itself, where the receptor contains a tyrosine kinase domain, and these receptors are called RTKs or receptor tyrosine kinases. Or in other cases, Tyrosine kinases are separate enzymes closely associated to the receptor and in these cases they are called receptor associated tyrosine kinases or non-RTKs and these are the two major classes of the catalytic receptors. Tyrosine phosphorylation is regulated by two major negative feedback mechanisms. The first is the protein tyrosine phosphatases commonly known as the PTPs and these remove the phosphate group from activated proteins, making them inactive. And the other major mechanism is the receptor endocytosis. Alright, let's talk first about the RTKs. RTKs mediate signaling of insulin and many growth factors. And signaling goes on, as we mentioned, binding of the ligand, dimerization of the receptor, phosphorylation of the receptor, and in this case, it is autophosphorylation as the receptor phosphorylates itself. Then adapter proteins bind and the signal goes on. The two major types of RTK signaling are the RAS MAP kinase or the RAS ERK pathway and the PI3K ACT pathway. In the RAS MAP kinase pathway, the first adapter protein that binds to the phosphorylated tyrosine residues of the receptor is the GERB2. The GERB2 upon binding activates another protein called SOS or son of sevenless and this SOS activates in turn the RAS protein. And the RAS actually is a small G protein that gets activated by the exchange of GDP for GTP. That's why the SOS is also called RAS GEF or guanosine exchange factor. And the RAS, once activated, starts a phosphorylation cascade on a sum complex structure called MAP kinase module. The MAP kinase module consists of three kinases in sequence, each one phosphorylates the next. And these kinases are called RAF, MAC, and ERK. And the last one is the MAP kinase itself. The ERK or the MAP kinase, once activated, enters the nucleus and starts to induce the transcription of proteins favoring cell growth and at the same time induces transcription of PTPs, the protein tyrosine phosphatases that regulate and exert a negative feedback on the MAP kinase pathway itself. The second major RTK pathway is the PI3 kinase or the PI3K ACT pathway. 
and the adapter protein here is the enzyme PI3 kinase itself that phosphorylates the PIP2 and converts it into PIP3 and this could be reversed by a PTP called P10 that was discovered to be mutated in many cancers. The PIP3 itself is a docking site for other proteins, the most important of which is the ACT, which is also called protein kinase B. And this reminds us of protein kinase A mentioned in the GS signaling and protein kinase C that was mentioned in the GQ signaling. All right. The ACT waits for binding of two other proteins to get activated. These proteins are PDK1 or PI dependent kinase and mTORC2 which stands for mammalian target of rapamycin complex. An active ACT releases BAD from BCL2 and releases TASC2 from REB. In other words, it gives freedom to the BCL2 and REB proteins. BCL2 inhibits apoptosis, while REB activates mTORC1, which favors cell proliferation. So that we can say that the pathway in general promotes cell survival. Alright, the non-RTK signaling involves a receptor that lacks tyrosine kinase activity and gets phosphorylated by the help of a separate protein tyrosine kinase. The two major types of non-RTKs are the JAK-STAT signaling, which mediates the action of growth hormone and many cytokines, and the second is the SARC family tyrosine kinases, which mediate signaling of integrins and lymphocyte receptors. In the JAK-STAT signaling, once dimerization occurs, the JAKs or JANAS kinases start phosphorylation of the receptor and phosphorylation of each other as well. Then the STAT proteins get close and bind to the docking sites. And STAT means signal transducer and activator of transcription. The STATs get phosphorylated and activated by the JAK and start to separate in the form of dimers, enter the nucleus and activate transcription of proteins enhancing cell growth and at the same time proteins regulating the JAK stat signaling. They are called suppressors of cytokine signaling as they bind to and inhibit the JAKs and the stats. The SARC family tyrosine kinases is a group of different tyrosine kinases that work in a similar way to the JAKs and activate many downstream targets like stat proteins. And it was found that this pathway is overly active in many cancers. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.